All right, so you're recording, are you? I am recording the OSD, yeah, so you can see the artificial horizon. And then on the left-hand side, you've got the speed in kilometres an hour. Oh, RC link lost, returned home. Okay, we have a bit of an emergency. Coming around behind you at the moment. Yeah, it's gone into returned home. So here we are down the flying field on a, uh, f I call it fresh today, fresh, Jason. Yeah, yeah. Fresh. Seven degrees, I think. Yeah, fresh would be a good adjective for the weather. The sun has been out a bit, but it's a little bit chilly. <clears throat> now, we have a new product here to uh, flight test, um, which is a type of shape I haven't seen before, but there are some remarkable features there on are. this uh, RC airplane. So tell us all about it. So this is an Atom RC swordfish. Um, so we've seen other models from Atom RC before. Um, and they've all been pretty popular with the FPV community as they're built towards the FPV community. One thing we always get asked when we're flying down the club where majority of people don't fly FPV is what's a good model to start with. And it's quite hard to kind of guide people because you've got flight controllers and then INAV and all that kind of stuff. Atom RC have kind of shaken it up a little bit and on this particular model, and they've started doing it on a few of their models, the Dolphins come with it as well now, they are now manufacturing their own INAV flight controller, or it can also work with uh, other software, but INAV flight controller, pre-soldering it, pre-installing it, and pre-flashing the firmware, and even more, they set it up. So all the servos are going the right way, um, all the GPS is installed and configured on the right ports, etc. The only thing you have to do is put a receiver in and set up the switches on your transmitters to the right channel. Uh, it's a huge thing. Massive, massive advantage. No, so no. For someone that's never done... I mean, I, I've put a crossfire receiver in on this one, um, and here's the antenna. It had a little cu couple of nice little holes for the antenna to sit in, um, and they pre-installed the GPS as well, um, which sits underneath this cover here, which I probably can't get out because I've pushed it in, but there's a little GPS in there. And you're using goggles too, and uh, D from DJI, and the new O3 cameras. Goggles too, and O3 Air. I've drawn and printed this little cover. This doesn't come with it, this, this little gimbal or antenna holder. Um, so we'll put the links to those files in the video description if anyone wants to download them. Uh, and I'm also running it on a four cell lithium ion pack, which I've made. Ooh. And we can put the links to those files. If you've got a 3D printer, you can print it out and, and make your own battery. Brilliant. Um, so can I just, I just cover one basic thing? Because some folks watching this won't know what a flight controller is. And it's a component that you can get that sits between your servos and your receiver. We use it a lot in FPV because it provides us the telemetry back to the FPV goggles we're wearing. So because it's got GPS on board, it'll tell you height, uh, so altitude and speed and all that type of stuff. But it also gives you features like return to home and loiter and, and uh, self-leveling. Lots, lots of different amazing things you really want as an FPV pilot. Absolutely, and it also acts as a gyro, so it gives you stability in wind. That as well. Um, but what it also does, and we can show it in this video, thankfully, because now DJI Goggles 2 records the OSD onto the video files. An OSD, we mean the on-screen display of data, the telemetry, yeah. yeah. So you'll see when I'm flying around a little arrow that's pointing to where I'm stood and how far away I am, etc., how high I am, all that kind of information, how much battery you've got left, is all displayed in your goggles so you know when to come home. Yeah, and brilliant. Um, because it quite it can be quite disorientating, can't it? And oh yeah. Someone, you know, you, you, you fly up and, and you're so used to seeing the ground from ground level, and suddenly you see it from above and it doesn't look the same. No, absolutely. And I've I've only really just started doing fixed wing FPV, and as you know, I have got lost a few times, yep. and that's why it's important to have a spotter because they can keep an eye line of sight on your plane and guide you back. But with the with the flight controller and that uh, arrow you were saying that gives you a bearing back to where you're standing with your transmitter yeah. that's invaluable Absolutely. you know to have that when you're flying fpv so really impressed with getting the kit to put together is five minutes um maybe another five minutes to program your transmitter up um unusual v-tail design um the wings are clip on there's there's just two buttons here to release the wings and they pop off for easy transportation tailplanes bolt on and you get these sort of uh, side force generators here all the servos one really nice feature they've used ball links everywhere oh so um, super precise so, control so then really nice carbon reinforced no slot ball links no slot and, and really bright red and green oh uh, lights as well lights as well so um yeah, quite <coughs> impressive um i i so far i hope it flies as well as it went together because so far it's probably one of my 
favourite FPV models to ever put together because it's ready to go out the box. So I can't stress enough, I've put together a few Maytech flight controllers yeah. and you get the board, kind of three layers, you have to solder in the pins, yeah. then you have to... It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot. It's it's a lot of work. <laughs> that's to just the start. Just, it's a lot of work. To have it pre-soldered is nice. To have it pre-soldered and put in the plane is even nicer, but to have the software loaded and configured... I now have loaded and configured yeah. for the plane. Um, the only thing I have yep. done um, is it was on iNav 5.1, which is the latest stable release. Um, unfortunately, that iNav doesn't support the OSD from DJI, um, because DJI are rubbish, it's not iNav's fault. Um, so iNav in iNav 6 have released a compatibility mode that makes the OSD work. Um, so I downloaded all the settings that is used, flashed iNav 6 and put all of their settings back. So it will fly as per um, how it was given to me from Atom RC. And, and with all their configuration, the only thing I've done is upgraded it to six simply so that I can get the OSD to work. Makes a lot of sense, and I'm, I'm excited about showing that OSD and what we get in on the goggles when we're when we're flying FPV. All right, good. Let's uh, enough chit chat. Let's get it in the air. Let's see how it flies. Absolutely, let's go. And it has got quite. If I give it a bit of power, are you ready? It has got quite a bit. Yeah. It's not going to need much of a throw. Yeah, yeah, it's not going to need much of a throw. Okay. I'll throw it up, we'll, we'll put a line of salt. Yeah. And then I'll put the goggles on afterwards. Guest hand launcher yeah. today is Simon Wood. Yeah. So you're going to go FPV right from the off? No, no, I'm going to do a oh, okay. line of sight test. Line of sight test first. All right. Actually, do you know what? I could go line of sight. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> I'll go line of sight. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Probably best. Uh, ready? Okay. Well, went away easy. All right, so you're recording, are you? I am recording the OSD, yeah, so you can see the artificial horizon. And then on the left-hand side, you've got the speed in kilometres an hour. Oh, RC link lost, returns home. Yeah, we have a bit of an emergency. Turning around behind you again. Yeah, it's gone into returned home. I can't see. Can you point to it, Simon? It's behind us. Okay. Go through this one. Yeah, I can see it. Very bad radio. It's off. It's off to the left, your right hand side at the moment. Okay, I'm going to land. Okay. Oh well, we're down. Never lost signal like that before. So that's got to be the antenna come on from the receiver or a duck receiver, I think. Okay. Because. Much like we were talking about how important it is to have a flight controller when you're flying FPV. Yeah. Um, I lost link. So as you see on the screen, it said radio link lost going into return to home when we were over there. And then the plane flew around the back of us and uh, lined up for an approach, at which time I got control back so I could manually land it rather than... It well, I think so what we've done, if anything, is proven the advantage of having a really flight well. controller. <laughs> of having a flight controller and it going into return to home. Yeah. and saving you because you would have lost it otherwise. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, Brilliant. yeah, without a doubt, because I, I had nothing at all, no switches, no nothing. So, um, All right, so we'll figure out, we'll figure out the problem. We'll fly again. We'll fly again, yeah. 
So here we are, quick update to our failsafe situation. The problem being the antenna for the receiver has come disconnected. That would do it. Um, which would do it, so... Uh, Not much range without, without the aerial plugged in. Amazing that it went that far without an antenna, to be fair. Um, and then Atom RC, the flight controller, done its job. It took control on radio loss uh, and it lined the aircraft up for a landing, at which, case, at which point I actually then regained control because it came in uh, range again. But had I not been using a flight controller in that flight... You would have stacked it. it, would, it would have been I think you meant to do this. Yeah. <laughs> I think you <laughs> meant to do that. Deliberate. What a great demonstration. <laughs> so, fantastic demonstration of why you use a flight controller... When you're flying, when FPV. You're flying FPV. Yeah, brilliant. Um, okay. even your spotter, which I had stood next to me, would have been able to do nothing. No. You know, um, you know a radio link loss is a radio link loss. So. Yeah. Quite scary at the time. Never had that before, but, you know... Now I can trust the equipment. Well. All right, second part of this video, we'll get it in the air and we'll get some uh, better better footage yeah, and hopefully some good range. Let's go. So, flight two. Flight two, this time we've fixed the problem, as you've seen. Receiver antenna connected. So take off in the goggles this time. Okay. Okay, so, into acro mode. Acro. Armed. Armed. Okay. Good. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, there we go. This time, we're not getting the error of... Got the uh, yes, I do. Perfect telemetry. My... over the wings. You're recording, are you? Yeah. Call me paranoid. Panning around with the camera, as you can see. And then pan the other way. And the image quality is fantastic now. Now we're just gliding. Well, we used to think the original air units were good, weren't they? I but know, this but 0 is. 1080p in the goggles now, it looks fantastic. So what um, features have you got enabled on this? As well as the telemetry, you've obviously got a return to home. We've got, tested that out. <laughs> we've tested the return to home. But what else have you got? Uh, so I've got uh, angle mode, which if I enable angle mode, um, basically if I put it into a bank and let go, it'll automatically just return to straight and level flight. Right, yeah. Um, to the horizon, so it'll only let me bank that much. Um, which is really good for giving people their first sort of go at FPV, really, because they can just let go of the sticks and uh, it will just go straight and level. Um, acro, mode. I've got acro mode, which is basically just a gyro enabled. It, it irons out any bumps. Manual. And I've got manual mode as well, which um, is just literally like a traditional plane. Um, acro mode. I've also got returned home, as we found out, uh, but that's also on a switch. So if I got completely disorientated, uh, I could hit return to home and it will come back. But as you can see in the bottom middle of the screen, there's an arrow which is pointing to where we're stood. So if I follow that arrow um, so that it's forward, uh, it says we're 0.1 of a kilometre, so 100 metres away. You're over our heads. Yeah. So um, the little home arrow is quite important. That's a really good uh, system. I think that that was the issue. <laughs> uh, I've got a compass at the top which you can see moving around which tells me which way we're flying. Um, There's nothing to stop you plugging into iNav and the configurator and adding 
No, absolutely not. More no. features like loiter and auto leveling and all this type of stuff, is there? Absolutely. Or yeah. tr auto trim. Um, There's a lot of stuff, huge amount of stuff you can do with iNav. So do a little bit of climb. Get a nice view. What's your altitude there? It's 300 feet? Uh, approximately, yeah. Good guess then. Yeah, I'm still working this up because it's not the iNav, it's the Betaflight OSD that it's using. So, uh, still working out a few bits myself. Uh, got speed. And that's just gliding now. And then got on board. Yeah, just on board video now. <coughs> Where's that plane? Uh, two planes behind us, five planes. They're not going to go directly over the patch. They were above 400 anyway. Hey, near a thousand. I can't judge distances or height. <laughs> I just can't. We're landing down here, aren't we? Yeah, uh, the wind is cross actually, in our faces. Okay, I'm coming directly. I'll land now. Oh, there you go. So the current, I've noticed, doesn't move the decimal point. So when you go from 9.9 .9 to 10 amps, it goes to 107, but it's actually 11.7. Oh. Is that a, that's a bug then, is it? Well, yeah, it's because it's a compatibility issue between iNav and Betaflight. Landing. That's good. Well done. Landed in the goggles. FPV flyer. Landing. Yeah. Um, All good. Really impressed with how well it flew out of the box, given their iNav tune. You know, this is completely their iNav tune. I haven't adjusted any of the tune at all. All I've done is upgraded from five to six. So, um, top work. Atom RC on giving us something that's plug and play with iNav. Um, well, might have to get another one. So I think you've felt that pain many a times, haven't you, Dom? Oh man, <laughs> doing so it they, from scratch is painful. Yeah. Yeah. They've also sent me a Dolphin, um, which is another one of their sort of. It's a single motor pusher, uh, and that also has a flight control all pre-installed in it as well. So we'll get that one going next. Right. So um, yeah, all in all, really successful. Great onboard footage, um, and uh, I'm really impressed with how easy it goes together for an iNav plane. Great. Thanks very much, Jay, for this uh, flight test. We'll be back with another one soon, everyone. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Cheers. Pan over the wings. You're recording, are you? Yeah. Call me paranoid. So panning around with the camera, as you can see. And the image quality is fantastic now with these. And now we're just gliding.